Welcome to Tea Time with Gary and Terry. I'm your host, the Big Bear. So sip on that cup of tea and get ready to sail the seas. Hi, everybody. It's good to see you. Today is episode 1079. Mountain Bear creates Carl Brown, my dream horse, and tea talk. All right, let's make sure we're live here. Everybody's crushing. Everyone having a great Saturday? Okay, I got some real good stuff for you today. We got uh, uh, Toronto, China, tall. These, these are my notes. Electrician, greenhouse, tree, cow, horse, Carl, bikes, compliance, flee the city, plants. So whenever somebody sees me do two hours... Uh, it comes from that. That's my little. Uh, that's my little thing. Oh, and I figured out a really good workout that I think anybody can do, and I think it's. Um, I think it can be really, really helpful. It's just jumping up and down. I think a lot of uh, people's what it what appears to be fat is just your endocrine system not processing waste properly, and that's why you bounce a baby because they can't walk or anything. So uh, jumping rope. Uh, dancing, trampoline. Um, the the most in shape I've ever been in my life revolved uh, the two times in my life. One was in the Czech Republic. Hey, George, you up here, buddy? And the other was in Los Angeles. It was about jumping up and down. No, but do it for a while, like at least thirty minutes of just like jumping, because your uh, your your lymphatic system doesn't uh, have a pump. Like your your heart pumps the blood. Your lymphatic system needs movement. And so just jumping up and down, especially if you're really, really tall, it's, uh, it's crucial. <clears throat> That's why I think uh, a lot of cultures dance is because it, it's a way to stay young when you're old. That's why it's like, you know, you go to a lot of Latin American countries or uh, parts of the world where they, they dance culturally, they, uh, they look way better when they're older. And then the, the people that don't move that guys, it's why you have to bounce a baby. You understand? Like babies will cry and then you bounce them and then they stop crying. It's because they have to process their lymphatic system, their lymph and your, and most of your lymph nodes are right where you have your belly. It's right around your, like your hips through your belly, all the way around that tire, right around your gut. That's your lymph nodes. And so I think a lot of, um, bad health is from not processing Uh, your lymphatic system. I just want to throw that out there. Okay. So first off, my friend who sold me this house, he's a realtor up in North Idaho. His name's Turbo Todd. uh, Got together with some of my other friends to make a commercial for his uh, company for selling houses in North Idaho. And here it is. I think it's, I think it's epic. If I saw this on television, I would be like, Amy, we're fleeing the city. In the days of old, the men would lead, women would nurture and children would thrive exploring the world around them. Today, many are trapped in a cycle of mundane, day in and day out as the walls close in around them. The cost of life has become the cost of freedom, the burden of stress for another square foot. But the days of old haven't left, even as the world covers up the realities of life. Men still love their wives. Women still long for the joy of their children. And families still thrive in places of peace. The days of old are not far away. They are within reach. They are your right that awaits your flight. Welcome to FleeTheCity.com. Well done. Well done, boys. Wasn't that great? That was, uh, yeah, it's a bunch of bears got together and made that for Turbo Todd. So uh, if I watched that, I'd be like, oh, yeah, flee the city. And, you know, <laughs> uh, someone sent me this. So news just broke in Toronto, Canada, that the cops' pension fund is effed. Four billion loss reported in 2020. Owen Benjamins is batting 1,000 still. You know, it's not, <sighs> we can go with 1,000. You know, I've been wrong. Like, I thought Trunk was going to get back in, but... I think they uh, they garnered enough chaos and victim uh, culture from the right that they didn't need Trunk anymore. But I, I do bet pretty darn close to a thousand. 
So this is what I wrote about that. And so that's why I think uh, leaving cities is very important because there's a lot of bubbles popping, a lot of them. And it's not just one. It's many, many bubbles. And what did I write about this? Because I uh, thought it was pretty, pretty good. Whatever they, quote unquote, demonize is out of money. It's called a cover narrative. The reason there's an open hostility against rural, traditional, white, middle-class Americans is because they're out of money and they want us to live like the now worship pod people in the cities, gays, Jews, blacks. I've declined their deal and have chosen to continue crushing in my rural, white, traditional life. If you don't require their system for wealth dependency, they completely leave you alone, whoever they is. The entire thing is about their failing Ponzi scheme and broken promises to the offspring of people lured off their farms with tricks and scams. Think like a child and you won't be tricked. Does something have actual value? Is it fun? Outside is great. Family is the best. When dad's on his phone, it's no fun. Chasing chickens is fun. Having friends is fun. Sitting all day is boring. Life is simple. Anyone who tries to convince you otherwise is stealing from you or trying to finger your nose or anus. Oh, how dare you, big man? Finger the anus. That's over the top. Okay, well, check this out. China apologizes for forcing Biden's staff to submit to anal COVID exams. Around 50 members of Biden's team were subjected to anal penetration on one or more occasions from the Chinese Communist Party doctors. China promises to stop. Me, Chinese. Me, play joke. Me, take your anus and give it a poke. But judging by Biden's staff, they liked every inch. They appreciated every inch. Yeah, the staff enjoyed every minute of it. They would pay. They normally have to pay for that. They got it. They got it. Literally, it's almost like um, they got a service for free. Oh, and if you want a super chat, entropystream.live slash app slash own Benjamin comedy. Think of me as a very good waiter or a piano man. Don't you tip your waiter? You tip your piano man, right? I mean, you don't have to. You can request a song and not throw it, uh, some money in the jar, but it's frowned upon. So that is entropystream.live slash app slash Owen Benjamin Comedy, because I think live streaming and comedy is becoming a gratuity-based business. All right. And also, P.O. Box 490, Sandpoint, Idaho, 83864. I think we already have one. Does this work, BB? Yes, it does, Stone Dust Bear. Thank you. Owen, if you are interested in a decent family-friendly movie, check out the movie Tomorrowland. It has a ton of truth drops. Thank you for what you do. God bless. God bless you as well. Thank you. Always love your piano and homesteading streams the most. Big ask. Was hoping you could degrab a lost boy into something beautiful. The piano is great, and message is based adjacent. Thanks for all the gravy. Uh, I can check it out. Want to know what I was playing this morning was... Oh, cinnamon, where you gonna run to? Where you gonna run to? This song is awesome. Where you run to? All on that way. So I ran to the Lord. Please hide me, Lord. Don't you see me down here praying? Nina Simone, I was jumping up and down to that this morning. Getting my lymph nodes activated. Um, it, it's a funny and an interesting part of the song was... Uh, I, I tried to, I ran to the rock, please hide me rock. And the rock wouldn't hide her, the sinner man. Do you know that in the Quran, they say in the end times, the Jews will try and hide behind rocks and the rocks will, will not allow them to hide behind them. Isn't that interesting? Revelation, not revolution. I learned that in the song. Yeah, totally. Hey, God. The U.S. And by the way, much love to my Jews. I love the Jew. The Jews are great. The U.S. House of Representatives has approved $1.9 trillion monetary. Who cares? No one cares, Jihad Bear. Stop bringing that here. We are a nation addicted to government intervention. No, we're not. I'm not. Are you? Are you, Jihad Bear? Are you addicted to that? Why would you ruin a great vibe and funny and all that? Or did you see that the house is there? No one cares. There is no house. There is no boomer. The boomer is in your mind. Uh, the Political puppets are nothing more than a puppet show for the broken because the broken don't understand finance versus morality. There's two forces in this fallen world. It's finance and morality. The morality of a population that says there's no amount of money that will get me to disavow my own son. 
versus we got money to get you to disavow your own son. Bang, that's the clash. And right there in the middle, you have a puppet show. Here comes Trunk off the top ropes. Oh, Nancy Pelosi's rubbing her hands again. Just don't bring it here, okay? Right now, there's a a massive, I think, um, because China, the Chinama, they're not legally allowed to buy, to exchange their money for uh, U.S. dollars. I think that's the whole point of Bitcoin. I think I'm finally starting to figure out what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is a middleman, so China can take over the American dollar. I think that's what it is. All right. Oh, by the way, someone, uh, Craft and Lore, North Idaho, Heritage Goods, Coeur d'Alene City. Uh, they gave me a wallet, and I really liked it. Where is it? Info at craftandlore.com, L-O-R-E. So craftandlore.com. Uh huh. You doing commercials now? I'm not getting paid for that. They're cool people. One of the ladies was uh, over hanging with my wife, and uh, her husband wanted to give me a wallet, and so I want to help them, so I will. All right, anyway, let's keep going. All right, what's this, plants? Oh, yeah, you guys want to see the, uh, we got the propane heater pumping in the greenhouse. Oh, how dare you, it's such a waste of money. Do you know how much money you spend as a family on groceries right now in this current environment? A month. Okay, now the, the propane is way cheaper. So, um, and that's right now. Wait till it gets even crazier. Food prices are going to keep going up. Have you seen Wallet Trailer by Tim Dillon? Kind of funny? No. All right. So this is uh, what's going on here. I'll stop yelling. I apologize. It's tea time. It's tea time with Gary and Terry. Hey, love, tell me what's going on here. And these two beautiful... I'm uh, putting some of the starts we had going in the attic yeah. into the soil. Walter and Charlie... Walter's helping me. Charlie is, is kind of adding some chaos. But um, as you can see from his face, I don't know if you want to zoom in. Has he been eating dirt? He's, he's, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Charlie. Uh, but yeah, that's all we're doing. So we're going to have these peas going. I started not too long ago because once they go, they start to grow fast. So the peas are going to go up over here? Yeah, they, and it's like a, it's a type of vining pea that goes, I think, eight feet tall, six or eight feet. So it's totally going to wrap around very easily. Awesome. And George is obviously hunting. And then uh, some beet, little beet sprouts are planting. Charlie! And uh, I got some compost in there. And it's hot, guys. If you open up one of these piles, I already closed it up, but way in there, it's probably about 150 degrees. Uh, so, yeah, I mended the soil with a little of this. So, yeah, we keep it. We, do, we don't let it go under 50 degrees at night. And we're, we're uh, right now we're planting a lot of cold, resilient plants. And, um, yeah, I, I built that greenhouse with my bare hands, me and one other guy. Much love to Bradley. Bradley gets it. He's a straw, organic strawberry farmer out of Mo, uh, Montana. He had the attention to detail that I needed, and I just had the brute strength. Did you read how Kill Gates wants all rich countries to convert? Uh, Jihad Bear, one more in your band. One more, keep an eye on Jihad Bear, everybody. One more in his band. If you want to talk about Bill Gates, take it somewhere else. There's Guys, there's an almost infinite amount of truther channels out there that um, love that stuff. They love it. They, they love when you focus on what Bill Gates is up to and all that stuff. I'm, I'm showing you an alternative to that hellish world. And you can either come here or not. So, Jihad Bear, why don't you go find a Jihad somewhere else? How's that sound? All right, what's up next? Um, oh, this is really funny. Two ladies gone. Good, good. I, I'm glad. That, that was getting, I, I literally just told him, don't talk about the government. Oh, did you see what Kill Gates is up to? If you're scared of Bill Gates, you're gay. If you don't, if you don't, if, Bill Gates, you can give him a wedgie and throw him in a little swimming pool. And then when he tries to get out of the swimming pool, you just keep popping him in the, in the forehead. Not to hurt him, I'm not encouraging violence, but just like that, right? Just pop, pop, pop right in the forehead. He's good, but I mean, uh, come on, just pop, 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 right? It's that simple. Because you you gotta understand a lot of these people that are being herded and messed with they'll th- their their minds are gone. Check this out. This is a great little video I found here. <clears throat> That's a lint roller, by the way. Lint roller. I wrote. Um, what did I write? I wrote, I bet at this point you can get a masked city dweller 
to do literally anything. All you have to do is get three plants ahead of them, like just three people to do it first that is on the payroll. And whatever it is, they will they will do it. And I wrote, don't do this, but I bet you could get them to cut off their earlobe to get an iPhone. Fact. By the way, I, I think you can get a little snip. Like if you had a bunch of people doing just a little snip of the bottom of the earlobe and you just had a very professional black gentleman just going swab, clip, they do it. Of course they do it. Uh, guys, what's currently in this vaccine, quote unquote, is way crazier than an earlobe. There's monkey DNA in it and dead baby cells. It's like a would you rather game except psychopathic grabbers. I bet if you had three actors chum the water ahead of a city dweller, you could get someone to eat their own shit. Fact. Okay, so that's what you're dealing with. And if Jihad Bear wants to focus on that, if he wants to come in and be like, keep focusing on that they're going to do it to you. No. If, if, if like that guy just did this to me with his lint roller, I go, no. And you go, ah, you, you see the joke? I'd be like, yeah, it's pretty funny though. I used to go around bars when I'd get drunk and bored. When I was in my early 20s, I'd go around and just, uh, uh, I'd get like a little flashlight and just check people's IDs. And they'd always show me. I was, uh, that was when I was first signed by CIA. I think they, they really liked me because I was so good at psychological operations. I would, uh, I remember I was out with this dude, Michael Kivas, who's uh, represented, I think he was Hillary Clinton's agent. Good guy. I liked him. I always liked the guy. But, and he would get so excited when I would like go up to somebody and, uh, <laughs> and just be like, I see some ID and they'd be like, yeah, sure. And I'd be like, okay. And, and dude, he couldn't get enough of it. That's the thing about a lot of these like agent types. There, there's a good side to them. Not, I, I'm not going to say good, but they're, they're just really interested in human behavior. Like really, really interested. It's cause you're six, eight. No, if I was a mit dude. You could get away with way more if you're little. Way more. And eh, no. It's probably good. part of it is because I'm 6'8". Um, but a lot of these grabber types, they are not just like evil. They just are obsessed with uh, human behavior. And I, I'd always just go, I'd be like, can I see some ID? And they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Dude, I'd go up to like black thugs. And I'd be like, hey, my man, can I get some ID on you? And he'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, here you go. I'm like, oh, yeah, I get, nice. Going to go get yourself a little Hennessy? Going to get yourself a little Hennessy? <laughs> oh, and when I – oh, check out this one. This is a bike, this is a bike thing. Yeah, watch this. Watch this video. Why are you shitting steal a bike? It's narrated it's by Carl Brown. It's a freaking string. He don't even know about it. This is why you don't steal a bike. It sets you up. Look at him. Oh, yeah, that's why you don't steal a bike. Carl Brown knows. I can't wait to show you Mountain Bear's new Carl Brown. And this black dude in the comments section was like, yeah, I, I, don't, I can't remember exactly what he said. But he was like, basically, yeah, black dudes can steal bikes, but what's up with all the white cucks? And I'm like, I know. That's the thing is like, I agree. Whites cuck. Is, if for as many bikes stolen, whites are like real creepy sexually these days. Really creepy. A lot of them. Not, obviously not all. Nobody here, I don't think. I could smile at a mile away and ban them. But um, there's a real cuckery going on. Because I think what happened is fathers of a certain color leave their kids when they're young. And so the kid fetishizes bikes because no one was there to get him a bike. It's very simple. Fathers of another color uh, didn't leave. And they just spent their entire lives masturbating in an office. And uh, their moms ended up humiliating and cucking their dad because they don't follow God's law. And so the lighter offspring ends up being a cuck, where it's like, do anything you want to me. It's the hard truth. Yeah, yeah. They sing love songs and bow down to girls. Exactly. I would, guys, I think it's more virtuous to be a black bike thief than a white cuck. Although, you know how I feel about bike thieves. You know how I, I can't stand when someone steals a bike. But there's something so disgusting, so deeply disgusting about cuckolding. And guys, like a lot of blacks know this, just like a lot of giants and strong men. There's a lot of dudes out there that want you to bang their chicks. And they'll like ask you, like this black dude was like, dude, it's crazy. Like white dudes will be like, hey, hey, will you, will you bang my wife? He's like, what's wrong with y'all? 
I'm like, I know. They do the same thing with Giants. Like, 6'8 white is like 5'10 black as far as, like, uh, instinctual domination fantasies. So when uh, a cucked man sees a 6'8 uh, white man with a strong jawline, they're like, oh, that's very dominant. You know, it's, it's just like that with, uh, with blacks. But 6'8 black is, like, really intense. That's for, like, the hardcore cucks. You know, it's like when you're getting, when you're trying to get John Wallace from the Syracuse Orangemen, 1994, uh, that's a whole different level. I'm friends with John Wallace, by the way. I went out with him one night. We hung all night, and same thing, same stories. It's all about the height, you know, all about the fantasies. I never understood the cuckold thing. Makes no sense to me. Oh, it makes perfect sense to me. It's about shame. It's about shame. It's about when you watch that much, guys, there's a reason I'm so against porn. When you watch other people bang all the time, it wires your brain to think that's sex. So you're more into watching your wife having sex than actually having sex with her. That's what porn does to your mind. It's insane, dude. It's insane. It's so bad for you. It's like when you watch, it, when you train your uh, gonads, your, your, your synapses, your sexuality to be a peeping Tom, which is what you do all the time with porn. The entire thing about porn is I'm watching, right? So then when it's go time, you're like, can I watch you two? It's like, what is wrong with you? Dude, it's, it's, it's like epidemic levels. And that's why they'll wear, they love wearing the mask. They're like, I'm a naughty boy wearing a mask. You want my wife? And that's why I think the future is going to have a lot of dudes with multiple wives because the, the males are gone. I mean, 90% of males out there are like, can I watch you two? Women hate that. Hate. Women will pretend. Don't get me wrong. They'll like pretend that they like it and stuff and do all that, but they, they're just so disgusted. And that's why they have abortions because they don't want to bring that guy's child into the world. If you still wagging off a dude, would you blow yourself? That's exactly, exactly. It's like, would you blow yourself? No, that's disgusting. Would you jerk yourself? Yeah, I do all the time. Why? It's just a different base. It's just a different base in the first base, second base, third third base, home run. Would you put your own ween in your own ass? Whacking off is jerking a dude. You're the dude. Congratulations. Oh, but I, I wouldn't put a ween in my, my own mouth. I don't want a ween in my mouth. What about a ween in your hand? Huh? Pervert? Oh, how dare you? Okay. Okay. Anyway, let's continue. Carl Brown, and bear, bear in mind, like, Carl Brown, Mountain Bear made Carl Brown. This is available exclusively at unbearablesmedia.com. That's unbearablesmedia.com. All right, everybody, enjoy Carl Brown. Oh, and by the way, my buddy... Texted me, I sent it to him, and he goes, dude, I got that guy works for me. And his last name, Brown. True story. These guys are all over the place. The media just doesn't ha- highlight the Carl Browns. There's, there's a good chunk of black males that are legendary. And they're like, because they've been through the hell. You know, because there's been a lot of psychological operations aimed at the black man in America since the 1940s. It's not done by the white man. It's done by the, you know, a group of the banking grabbies. Because they were, you know, because right around the 30s and 40s, as wealth was increasing in America in a lot of ways, so it was for blacks as well. And they wanted to put an end to that. So, you know, there's been a lot of grabbles. Like, if you look at hip hop and all that, it's, it really is. I'm not justifying their disgusting criminal behavior, and neither is Carl Brown. But when you're being psychologically attacked so hard and you make it through, you end up much stronger, much stronger. You don't think the Amish were messed with? Guys, they've been churning butter like this since like 1820. You don't think people used to mock them and stuff and now everyone knows they just crush? All right. Enjoy Carl Brown. Mountain Bear is a true legend. And uh, you can donate if you want. Uh, We're trying to Get together some cash to do our own uh, movie at unbearablesmedia.com. Right now, we don't have a total plan, but if you just like to, uh, none of the money goes to me. Guys, when, when you donate to like Bertaria Times or Unbearables Media, it's to get, uh, what's it called? Coffers? Get gold in the coffers? I don't know what it's called. But so in the future, we can like make more stuff. But if you'd like to tip me and my degenerate uh, 
partner, Kyington Bear, you do it on entropy here in the Telegram chat. All right, here we go. I think Kyington Bear is nodding off right now. I haven't seen a single entropy chat. What a disgusting piece of shit. <laughs> Yeah, Carl Brown. Oh, man. Don't let him see the bikes. He'll ask for the receipt. Yo, young blonde. Let me see the receipt for that nice new bike you got there, boy. Oh, oh, Carl Brown. Oh, Carl Brown. I, did, I, did, I don't got no receipt. I lost it. It got wet in the rain. Oh, you stole that bike, didn't you, boy? <laughs> yeah. Why'd you steal that bike, boy? Because I could, Carl Brown. Maybe you're too scared to steal a bike. That bike ain't yours, young blood. <laughs> you, you, you a sucker for the man, Carl. You a sucker for the white man. You a white man's gimp, Carl. Carl Brown will tell you the truth never changes, young blood. You were sold a bad deal, young blood. The white man is not your enemy. You your own enemy. Yeah, Carl Brown. Put the bike back, boy. Carl Brown owns his own property. Carl Brown attends his kids' soccer games. Carl Brown don't take no shit from no young blood. Oh, Carl Brown, why are you with the same woman with the six kids? I got all kinds of women all but Yeah, and those kids ain't gonna grow up to be nothing. <laughs> they need a father in their house. Carl Brown is the dad's dad. Man, Carl, why you gotta be like that, man? If you don't wanna be called a nigga, don't act like a nigga. Amen, Carl Brown. You're gonna make your people look like Look like a bunch of thieves, because that's what you are, thieves. I think you're overreacting, Carl Brown. I go to work and buy my own bike, so the white man can't put me in a little package and keep me in a jail cell. You young blood, you gonna end up in jail or in a little wheelchair like Barapolegic Band. What's he got <laughs> in his little wheelchair ro rolling around? <laughs> Ain't that right, Barapolegic Band? Oh man, Carl Brown, why are you so mean to me? <laughs> Bay, you roll yourself home. You you deserve to be in that chair. Carl Brown, I, I fell out of bed in my sleep. You shouldn't have been dreaming about bikes, boy. <laughs> Another brother with a bike fetish. <laughs> we never went to the moon, says says Carl Brown. <laughs> He's a truther. <laughs> Here comes Ira. Ira, I do not approve of what you do for a living. I'm trying to be a better boy. It ain't <laughs> happening, Ira. But if you would like to meet me for a barbecue at 3 p.m., you are invited. Please be on your best behavior. Do you want me to kill a guy for you? Because I will. I have no morality and I need your approval. Oh. I don't know who you're talking to, Ira, but you best settle down. <laughs> is it quit? That is none of your business. <laughs> but we do not participate in the rituals of you people. Oh, so it's not quit? Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what you talking about weens for, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go, bro. Go, bro. It's it's funny that we were just talking about the uh, the cuckolded whites. I mean, Ira is the definition of that. He's like, can I look at it? That's classic, classic. Oh, and um, uh, and there is no preferential treatment for like Jewish people or black people or gay people. None of that, guys. They're trying to trick everybody. That's why Carl Brown is like, boy, you want to stay out of the prison cell? You don't take no bike, boy. Because he's right. Like, do you guys remember that dude? You guys remember that dude? This will, I'm not going to get into it. I don't like getting into it with people, but I do like to avoid all internet drama. But do you guys remember that guy that, that uh, the moderators had to uh, ban from uh, Bertaria Times? They kept calling me an anti and all that. The, the dude named um, Jake. You guys remember that? And then he found Instagram and he was like getting really attacky about, about me. You guys remember? I'm just going to leave, get really vague about it. I'm going to check the chat. Um, 
You guys remember that guy? Really intense. He got arrested at the Capitol situation. I'm pretty sure he's in jail now. Um, Jake, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys remember? Yeah, I mean, according to the, the, the news, he's like arrested by like the FBI. So when you see these people, allegedly, I mean, I think um, karma, it's not even karma though. It's like, because they won't, the people being like, oh, how dare you? How dare you? Like you think that they're, they're protected by somebody. They're not. The people that get them to feel like they're victims are setting them up. I think there's a good chance that dude's like going to like prison. I met old, old bike thief before working in a power plant. His name was Monday. Oh, interesting. Okay. Jim Bob just texted me something. Is he a new approach to cycling retail with premium clothing fetish bike company? That's wild. I hope I didn't just make that with my mind. I don't think so though. They're dupes, total dupes. When you see these people acting like, Oh, you're big and homophobe. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? How dare you? It's like, you, you think that they're protected, but they're not. Victim consciousness literally gets them pulled into prison or pulled into a broken life. And the media doesn't report on that because it's a snake eating itself. You understand? Oh, oh dude, this is really funny. Matthew Hoffman says, Cucked whites intentionally leave their bikes out so they can watch the black dude steal them. Totally, dude. Totally. All right. I got another super chat. Thank you from Black Coffee Bear. Uh, Big Bear, don't let Dennis Codman spend this at the casino. I really think he needs some help. I got to give him, you know, there's nothing we can really do about it. He does his job well, and what he does with his money is is his business. If he has to hit rock bottom, he does. Um, this is from Mad Max Bear. Tip for the bard and a nickel for the bucket. Onward to Bear Taria. Uh, yeah. Because this, this is what happens. Kyneton converts this money into nickels, and he throws it into his own bucket. All right. Um, someone wanted an update on quarantining alone with Danielle. So she deleted her her uh, channel. And, uh, yeah. So because I think some bears were just, like, being very nice and, like, you know, it's you should get, you know, come outside, hang or something. I don't, Just very supportive and just deleted um, yeah, I don't, I, I, I wanted, it's just so trippy. I don't even really like thinking about it. Couldn't handle the gravy. I'm sending him a nickel plated bucket. Good. Cod and his bucket is the essence of logos and degeneracy. It's a, it's a, a binary. Poor Danielle. Now she's fine. And then someone stumbled on some other gravy with quarantining. It's called like unbearable quarantining with Danielle. Dude, it's crazy. I don't, I'm just, I'm just moving on. This real one or the real one? I didn't get to join Danielle's channel. Yeah, she uh, she went private and then she just deleted. And then someone suggested that it was like AI or something. It was all like invented. And so I I, I found I just I found her on Instagram. She's a real person. So and I'm not gonna uh, draw any attention to her. I think she's very shy. So I'm uh, I'm just letting it go and just moving forward. But uh, healthier alone is the channel that we control on YouTube. If you want to subscribe to Healthier Alone with Danielle and her two cats, um, I was not, I had no idea she existed. I don't know how this works. I'm just moving on, just moving on. All right. Yeah, if you want to uh, throw tip the piano man, enter it, be streamed out live slash app slash on Benjamin Comedy. Normally, Kaj just puts it right on the screen, but right now he's not for some insane reason. All right, what do I got next for you guys? Um, I figured out this is the kind of horse I want to get. Here we go. Get my happy, happy guy. Oh, just a happy, happy, happy guy. Oh, just a look at that happy. <laughs> oh, the happy dog. Oh, just a happy, happy, happy. Okay, so that's a mini horse, obviously. You think, oh, Big Bear, you're six foot eight. You can't possibly ride that thing. Oh, yeah? Well, not when I get myself a pair of rollerblades. Check this out. This is my dream. Out. 
All right. So that's that's how I'm going to roll. Um, There's a beautiful, beautiful picture of my cows yesterday. I just thought I'd show that. What's this say? Tree. What does tree mean? Oh, this is funny. That doesn't make sense to me. But then again, you are very small. That's my response when people try to explain the Trinity to me. And when I posted that, someone said the greatest, the, the thing I've been waiting for everyone to say. They said, I believe in the Trinity and I love Big Bear. I don't get my pastoral advice from a comedian. I'm like, exactly. Exactly. Okay, but I just thought this is funny. This is my new response to people. When they're like, but the Trinity, you need the Trinity. I'm like, that doesn't make sense to me. But then again, you are very small. Uh, This is a great picture from yesterday. Our greenhouse. Uh, It's getting going, guys. We, We got plants in there. We got it heating up. Oh, here we go. We got a super chat here. For the coffers. Thank you, Scouse Bear. And this is from Ryan. Thank you for pumping up the morality. I think this is the greatest time for all of us moral people. 100%. Israel's stupid law about shaming those who refuse the vax confirms the morally strong will survive and completely crush in the future. Toronto 5 Bear. Hell yeah. Guys, it's like, if you're scared, part of me is almost like, I'm, I'm starting to get real suspicious of the fearful, if that makes sense. When people are like, oh my God, I'm so scared of the vax. I'm like, are you scared of what you're going to do? It's the difference between being against sodomy, which I am, and homophobic. Homophobia is a thing where someone's like, I can't even be around a gay. They freak me out. I'm like, why? Because if you smell a beer, you'll suck their dick. There's a lot of dudes like that, guys, where they're like terrified of gays because they know that if they're, you know, in a weak spot mentally or they had a half eczema, they're on their knees sucking the day away. I'm not homophobic. I'm against sodomy. I'm against their lifestyle. But no, I can being around them doesn't make me scared I'm going to be a gay. I'm just like, you shouldn't do that. That's, that's really bad for your soul. Same with heterosexuals that do sodomy, guys. Like, you shouldn't be having sex with strangers for pleasure. It's really, really bad for you. Whether it's a vagina or a dude's ass, it's the same thing. The anti-gay pastors are always getting caught pumping. Yeah, the ones that are, like, really, really angry at the gays. You know, I uh, I think my approach to it has actually helped out a lot of gays because some of them have written to me, like, you know, the way you talk about quitting porn and whacking and stuff, I'm now applying to my lifestyle, and it's been very helpful. It's true because it's a fetish. It's Usually it's from being molested as a kid or having a dad leave you and you, like, crave a man in your life. And so that's typically what makes someone fetishize, you know, like 95% of lesbians I've ever known. And I've known a lot, you know, I've had a lot of Subarus around me in my life. It's because of an absent dad, a cuck dad or molestation, like everyone. You're not born that way. People that say you're born that way are usually the ones who have created this problem in people's heads from sexual abuse, cucking, uh, shirking responsibility, not being a good father. You know, a lot of people want to blame people for becoming quote unquote liberals or communists or whatever. If you're a dad and you left your kids, they're going to look to the state to be dad. My aunt became a lesbian after her husband molested their daughter. Right, right. It's a hatred of men. It's a fear of men. And it's like, and so lesbians typically just want companionship with a woman. Like they want someone that that doesn't scare them. Um, And women are just beautiful. Like there is a beauty to women that women can kind of turn on in themselves where they can like really appreciate each other's like hair and bodies and and skin and all that. And so they're not like super sex crazed. Like a lot of the gay men, gay men are just pump machines and uh, lesbians typically are not their lives. Their, their, their relationships aren't typically based on sex. Um, Despite what the pornos tell you. I used to watch Rogan podcast and I stopped and I found the stream. Same, I found Owen from Rogan, then dumped Rogan afterward. Um, yeah, yeah. I because I think I had a really honest, I had some real honest streams on Rogan, and I was naive to Rogan when I was on them. I did three Rogans in a year, and I didn't realize he was gatekeeping me. He was setting the narrative where my friends were concerned with my social media, and so that's why they could delete me. Because unlike some of these other comics who are accused of like rape. I was deleted because I was against transgender children. I never said anything about Jews or anything at the time. 
um, when I was deleted because um, I didn't really know any of that. I went through my Jew phase of like really being paranoid about Jews for like six months to a year after that when I started seeing like because I was really paranoid because I saw all these companies working together and, you know, all this. Um, and the fact that people want, thought it was OK to give a three year old a sex change, you know, and then you look at who what company owns all the hormones. It's Teva out of Israel. All these politicians pushing that you can't uh, boycott Israel. All right. So I went through this phase and then I'm out of the phase now. I realized that um, the people a lot of these people who say they're Jews aren't Jews. And also, it doesn't matter unless you engage in their business, unless you watch their pornos or like have a loan or you have these deviancies. If you don't, they leave you alone and they don't matter at all. And I realized that some of my anger towards them was still residuals from my perversions from before, like how I used to like watch porn and stuff. And like I was still I still had a mortgage. And uh, so now I, I literally I. Like when people blame Jews for stuff at this point, it feels almost like when blacks blame whites. Um, you have to take the ticket exactly. And they're just, they're their own worst enemies. And when they say they're Jews, they're not even Jews. They're like, they don't believe in God. They, they drink all the time. They, you know, these people, they, they just want to be in a victim class. All right. So anyway, Joe Rogan set the, the reason that I've mocked him for years now is because he did a real, he was a real Judas. Because he had me on, and I trusted him because I liked his uh, podcast, and I looked up to him as a man. And he was like, you know, we're really concerned about you because of my tweets. And guys, my tweets not only held up the test of time, they're hilarious. I said, I want to bring slavery back so Sean King admits he's white. And another one was about, like, David Hogg and all this stuff, about how if, you can't, if you're not old enough to grow pubes, you can't tell me not to own a gun. These were the tweets, guys. I was never... It was never like I had done anything bad. It wasn't like Chris D'Elia or um, uh, Brian Callen or any of these people. Because Brian Callen is now being paraded around the Prager U and Candace Owens where they're like, oh, and, and, and um, uh, what's that homosexual's name? Steven Crowder. Because they're like, oh, because you're conservative, they're trying to cancel you. It's like, no, he's been accused by, of rape by five women. And... He brags openly about his sex parties and coming in girls he doesn't know. And it's, it's like, it's insane. And his wife left him, took his kids. He's like a real disgusting guy. That's why they're canceling him. It's the rape accusations. They canceled me because I was against transgender children. That's a fact. You, you can look at my whole history. I didn't say a thing about Jews until I was kicked off Twitter. Then I started looking at who's running all this stuff, and I was like, oh, man, there's something really going on with these Jews. And then it was like, bang, YouTube, all this stuff started closing the door. So criticizing fake Jews is worse than rape in their eyes. It's fine. I don't care because I don't want to be in their, in their carnival act at this point. And I'm over the Jew thing anyway. I, I think a lot of them are just funny little guys trying to sell shit. Like I thought, and it was because my, a good friend of mine died of a – fentanyl overdose after fighting in Afghanistan. Then I find out about APAC and Netanyahu and all this bullshit. And I had like a lot of anger in me. And I almost don't trust people that don't go through that phase. Because when you start realizing that like YouTube, Google, Tinder, Grindr, all the wars, all the media, birth control, condoms, the music industry, the porno industry, like all of it, the banking industry, like every one of it, every single head, calls themselves Jews. I now understand the trick and I understand our liability of being engaged in it. If we're not watching what they're selling, they don't even exist. It's just like it's just like uh, being scared of the vaccine. It's like if you don't want one, don't take it. It's not a big deal. Um and so there was a conspiracy against me out of Hollywood when they when they uh when my agent and manager uh stopped representing me and I was always known for being a really nice good guy. It was total nonsense. Over this shit, over child abuse. Like, I was against child abuse. And so then I self-produced my own special, and that really scared Hollywood because I showed that you don't need them. You know, that I could sell it on Vimeo for 10 bucks and make thousands of dollars, pay off my costs, have my own success. And I really do think there was a conspiracy 
to destroy my name because if I, I was friends with all the big comics. I still am friends with a lot of them. And so you could see that I could shoot a special for $10,000 and bring in $80,000. So a $70,000 profit off Vimeo. How much does your agent get? How much? And it's like, oh, well, we can get 500000 from Netflix. It's like, that was my first one. My second one, my third one, my YouTube's growing. My Twitter's growing. You know, 250,000 followers on YouTube, th- hundreds of thousands of followers on Twitter. It's like Instagram, Facebook. I have all these platforms. I was cutting out Hollywood. And so Hollywood is basically run like a mafia. No different. And so they're like, we have to destroy his name so that other people don't follow in his footsteps. And that's what happened to me. And that's why I was canceled. So, and I wasn't canceled because I'm still here. And I've grown a lot from it. And I'm actually less angry. Like I used to be more angry, but they don't owe me anything. YouTube doesn't owe me anything. None of these people owe me anything. It's their businesses. If they want to like do their thing, that's great. But the people that fucked me over were like Joe Rogan and all these people because they set the, the they set the table for canceling me. They said, oh, like even still on YouTube, it's like oh, uh, Joe Rogan has a social media intervention with Owen Benjamin. Tell me how my joke was wrong. I want slavery to come back so a guy who's white who's saying he's black will admit he's white. That's funny, Joe. And it's true. It's hilarious. Joe's doing jokes about how if a, a female teacher rapes a little boy, it's good. Okay? But I don't want to be in their world. It's all good. I'm not angry at all. I couldn't be more grateful for my life. I have three beautiful boys, the best wife I can imagine. I live on an organic farm in Idaho. My friends crush. Every, like The bears are doing amazing. None of this would happen if they didn't kick me out of hell. That being said, Joe Rogan is a snake. He's a snake. And he's still slithering and slithering. And he's about... That, and another thing about Joe Rogan is he hates tall people. I'll get to that in a second. Here's another super chat. Cole Brown doesn't hate the gays. He just don't play that mess. Get yourself a nice church going woman. That's exactly right. And a lot of gays need that. For the bucket and the bard from Campfire Bear. Thank you very much. Okay, so I saw this. I love Joe Rogan when I watch Ari Shafir pissing. Yeah, yeah, they're degenerates. And I get why I scared people for a little while. Because I had a giant reach, and I was mad. I was mad at what, quote, unquote, they did to me, and I don't cuck. I don't have an office that I whack off in. I'm not a cuck. And so I get why a small group of controlling fake elite fake Jews were like, we got to get this dude from talking all this shit. I understand why they're scared. And and I, I get it. I'm, I'm not even mad at them about it because they're like, We're not going to allow this guy on our platforms talk shit about us. I feel, I almost feel bad for them now. Like they call themselves Jews. They don't follow any of the Torah. They're really scared and little and angry. It's like now that I see that we can just build our own shit and not deal with it, that they aren't oppressing us. Only our appetites and our ingratitude towards God oppresses us. I, dude, I find them kind of funny now. It's like I'm back to like reminiscing on some of my old agents and being like, what a funny little guy. I'm serious. It, and, and it's like, but I had to go through that. Someone in the comment section was like, oh, now you're saying the same thing about Jews that Alex Jones said. Aren't you going to apologize for him? No, he cucks to evil. I went through the looking glass and really saw on the other side what the whole deal is and how these people aren't really in control of our lives and they aren't really, they're, they're, they're the ones bringing the name Jew down, not, you know. Alex Jones is cucks to evil. Alex Jones says what he needs to for money. He didn't go through it. If you, if you have no ability to criticize the state of Israel, you're a shill. That's what he was doing. I see the individuals now, and I see that if they start living better lives and they stop acting like grabbers, they can be good people, and, and that's it. I don't have a tribal resentment. I don't have a financial resentment. None of that. All right. So, um, I just had to show you guys. Oh yeah. Yeah. Check this out. Where is it? Greenhouse. But isn't that just, I mean, how can I be, how can I possibly be ungrateful when, when that's my life? Like look at my son, my sleeping dog, all that straw is, is heated greenhouse in the winter of a beautiful Idaho, like mountain range. 
The Jews invented the Schofield Bible or most. Yeah, yeah, but who who read it? Don't give. This is how you cuck to the Jews. You want to know how you cuck to the Jews? You keep acting like they made you do it. You read the Schofield Bible because it justified a lot of sin. If the people didn't bite, it just goes away. I look at the people, the the Christian church-going people that said, I like this Schofield. I like the fact that he can rewrite the Bible because it allows me to butt fuck. That's what it was, guys. That's why all these guys love the Schofield Bible because it justified their private planes and, and their disgusting lifestyle. And then you blame the Jew. He just had chutzpah to pull off a scam. He is less accountable. The Jew, whatever, the fake Jew, whatever you want to call him, the leprechaun who did the Schofield Bible, financed Schofield. Schofield was a divorced degenerate. And the fact that the church has accepted it, the, the, the prosperity gospel, it was on them. That guy didn't betray Jesus Christ because he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. The people that betrayed Jesus' word were the ones responsible. And at any point, you can stop. You can just stop and go, oh, I don't, I, I'm not into this anymore. And then it's over. Just, it's that fast. It's your will. It's your heart. All right, here's some more. Here we go. Oh, wow. That was a very generous one. Thank you. Um, big shout out. Many thanks to Rabbi Unquipowitz and Jimmy C. Dirt Buckets for all you do. Why, thank you. I think you're going to see some really cool things uh, in the future, and I'm sure a lot of us are totally stoked. Onward and keep crushing. That was very generous, my friend. Thank you. All you guys are generous, but that was that was wild. I mean, Dirt Buckets, don't go to the casino today. You've lost every time. For those of you that have autism or autism adjacent, I don't believe Coddington has a gambling problem. It's all a joke. I know that there's probably 10% who are like, Jesus, Coddington, he doesn't go to casinos. Does he? Uh, make him tap bear. After two years of watching Owen's stream, I've grown three inches and I'm 34. Rogan's up for tea time with Gare, Tear, and Big Bear. That's the real trinity. The one and the only trinity that's proven scientifically. Exactly. Okay. Speaking of height... Where's the height thing? Did I not put this in? Oh, here it is. Look at this. Anita is a hall of social justice. I normally don't do this where it's like, hey, look at what the SJWs are up there. But this one hits a little close to home. Height privilege. Yes, straight white males. It's a thing. It's time we discussed height. For, and they're wearing stilts, so they're all the same height. So what do I do? I go in, leg sweep the stilts. And then while they're on the ground, I'd say, you're only short. Because your parents fucked Joe Rogan. Dad and mom, by the way. Joe Rogan is technically a pygmy. And that's another reason why I think Joe Rogan had no problem throwing old Owen into the fire. Because I'm a giant and he's a pygmy. And although he's really good at fighting. And he has really hard kicks. And he does all his ninja stuff. My people were typically the predators of his people historically. Like, his people used to have to hide behind rocks and hide in caves when my people were looking for food, and he still has that. I think that's one reason why he trained so hard, because he's instinctively knows that my ancestors ate his ancestors. Not that good at fighting, oh well. I, wouldn't, I would assume Joe Rogan could take me in a fight because of all the insane amount of training he's done. If, if Joe Rogan couldn't take me in a fight, that would be the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. Like, I work on, like, homesteading and piano and stuff. I jump up and down to get my lymph nodes activated. Like, I haven't kicked a bag or done, like, sparring in years. If he couldn't beat me up, I mean, that would just be... I know he could. I know he could. There's no way he couldn't. Because, I mean, if he spent thousands of hours training to fight and he couldn't beat up a guy that spends zero hours training to fight... uh. I mean, that would, I would, I would, I wouldn't even know what to say. I know he could. I know he could. Fact. Um, he would need a pair of ladder. No, no, no. It's easy. If you get in, like, so I have a reach, right? If you just get under it, bang. It's like, that's why training, if you have two guys that are trained the same, height is a huge advantage because of my leg length, my arm length, and my levers. So I can punch harder, kick, theoretically. Theoretically, because everything on me is longer, it's like levers and physics, 
I can like I could throw a baseball 80 miles an hour without really training super hard because of my height. That's why the fastest pitchers are like Randy Weaver and all these guys. Is that his name? I can't remember his name. Randy. Like they're they're just like 6'10. Torque, exactly. So um yeah, I could I could throw like 75, 80 miles an hour without any real training. It was the same with uh lacrosse. That's why you can throw a lacrosse ball like 120 because it's long. You have all this all right, Randy Johnson, there it is. So, oh, yeah, Weaver was the one at Ruby Ridge. Much love. Much love, Randy Weaver. Uh, brutal. But, like, so the advantage Giants have is just, stre- like, mass strength. Like, I can move big. You know, when I played football, I could I could move a lot of people uh, and hit very hard because of my more mass, all that. Also, I can I theoretically should be able to punch harder and kick harder and have a distance. It's, uh, like, have a... Uh, I, like I have a bigger bubble around me that you shouldn't be able to get in. That being said, since I'm not trained, you can get in that. And if you're in that 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 bubble, you know, um, and and you have skills, you can just wrap me up and knock me out. Uh, that's that's why training. If you're like that mighty mouse guy, would beat the absolute shit out of me. That guy that's like a hundred pounds in, in UFC. His name's like Mighty Mouse. Uh, like that's like training, like that level of training is, uh, is massive, massive. When you're like training thousands of hours, uh, my toolbox wouldn't help me at all. Um, that being said, Joe Rogan is really small and really gay. So, um, I don't know. I think maybe the so- like all that sodomy has made it. So every time he moves, he just like shits his pants. You know, not to be disgusting, but that's really what happens to these people. So, you know, oh, look how flexible he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His anus is very flexible. Um, You know, so if he moves in and I just hear, you know, I'd just be like, what the hell? And he'd be like, oh, Jesus, not again. Then bang, you know, that that would give me the advantage I would have is his um, his destroyed anus. All right, that's it. That's why they sit with their legs crossed every time. Kimbo Slice felony fights as a kid watching back in the day. Those were two homeless guys. Oh, yeah. Kimbo Slice had a lot of heart. Never go up against a trained fighter unless you have to. Right, right, exactly. Unless there's, like, a lot of chaos happening. Like, if there's a lot of chaos happening, being a giant is a huge advantage. Like, if you're just – like, I can just, like, get people to move because of my size. But if I'm, like, one-on-one in an octagon – any training is a problem for me. Any training, guys. Like, that's a, a lot. And, and a lot of people won't admit that. Yeah, I'm strong. I'm a uh, giant. But it's like, just like the, the concept of an arm bar. You know, there's so many things. Like, think about how bad, like, a dude, like, um, like who's that little dude who's a flat earther? He's a really good dude. He appears to be a good guy. Uh, Eddie Bravo. Like, think about how my height would have no advantage for me with him at all. You know, if we're just, like, just any ability he gets my flesh at all, it's like, I'm done. It won't matter. Yeah, it won't matter at all. But if there's a lot of chaos happening, though, just being a giant helps. Because you, if you just get anybody from the side, like, just, like, a highly trained smaller dude like Eddie Bravo or something, if he's looking that way and I just have a side shot on him, but if you just have, like, that one-on-one shit, I'd, I'd be beaten by any of them. Literally, guys. Eddie Bravo would get me to submit in under five seconds, I can imagine. Because it's like you just get, like, a pressure point or you get someone not breathing, and I'd be like, fuck, fuck, I can't fucking breathe. Uh, this is from Robert. Can we get a night piano stream soon? Absolutely. Uh, Baraplegic Bear. Oh, $7. Way to, way to go, Baraplegic Bear. I haven't kicked a bag in years either. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Think about how much coffee I've sold that 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 legless piece of shit. All someone has to do with all free organic fruit. Yeah. Oh, Bear Puget coffee. Yeah, yeah. I probably sold a thousand bags of his coffee for him. And what does he give me? Seven bucks. What does that mean? Three fifty for me, three fifty to cod. Twenty percent goes to entropy, which is fine. Much love, entropy or whatever. But it's like Bear Puget Bear, way to really way to really uh chum the waters. Yes, I can't wait for a late night piano stream. Yeah, it's going to be fun. All right, what else we got here? I think I've gotten everything. 
6.66. Nice. 15%. Thank you, Entropy. That's much, it's very generous. If you're six feet plus, you are a one hit in KO in a fight. You are a one hit KO in a fight. I don't know what that means. No, I think it's harder to knock out a giant guy because you just need more force. I, th- I don't know. I'm not going to make any claims. I wonder if having a beard helps you a little bit from being knocked out. Do you think that having a beard just gives you – because impact force, I know that time squared – like I I can't remember the exact uh, equation, but the amount of time of impact is a huge factor. So if you can just get another .1 seconds of impact time to – it's padding. Yeah, yeah. I think he's saying you have one hitter power. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, but here, see, here's something the little guys can do though. This is what, uh, who is that bike thief that always, that has like a 50 and 0 record Mayweather. He's so small and he guards his chin so tight in intensely. Denmark bear says size doesn't matter much. Denmark bear, weren't you like, you, you know, you seem to know, were you like a fighter or something? You seem like the type that used to do a lot of that stuff. But Mayweather can get it, so you can't hit him. And there's probably a way where you get like a little dude that gets so it's like you can't get his his uh, jaw. I know Denmark Bear is talking a lot of shit, but I think it's from experience. Um, I can't stand that greasy materialistic Mayweather. I like him. I think he's hilarious. I uh, I like all the shit he talks and how good he is at his craft. Denmark traded in his boxing gloves for latex gloves. Yeah, every time I did some boxing, kickboxing, and the gay taekwondo. Nice. The whole time he's just figuring out how to finger. He's like, I got to get a medical degree. Uh, don't like great per- boxer. Don't like his personality. See, I love his personality. I think that's it. Makes you want to watch his fights because you want to see him get knocked out, and it's genius. Like, Mayweather's this little dude who can't lose, and he talks all this shit. He's holding all the money. He's like, "Eh, I got all the money. But think about it. It's almost like he's the Donald Trump of boxing, where it's like he gets you where you want to see him get knocked out, and he just won't get knocked out. And it's great at his job. Like, that's that's what makes you want to watch him. And he's not an exciting boxer. He's not an exciting boxer. I used to hang out with that dude that almost beat him. Uh, in LA, I can't remember his name. Shit, we used to like hang. He was like this Mexican dude, really cool dude. Before I forget, if you want, you can do a night piano stream on Odyssey to test it. Uh, yeah, sign up for my Odyssey, O D Y S E E. Owen Benjamin on there. Hey, what's that dude's name who almost beat him? Um, Pacquiao? No, no, no. Vargas, no. Dillahoy, no. He was like, they were like, uh, they were, how was that guy's name? He used to be in like a bunch of my pictures on Instagram and shit. Um, chiseled. I met him on an airplane. He like Hispanic name. Medina, no, no, no. He like like the the ref had like broken it up and I think someone headbutted somebody. De La Hoya Corrales, nope. Diego Corrales, no. Castillo, nope. I'll know it when I see his name. Just look at all his, the people he's ever fought. Medina actually beat him. Heraldes, Canelo, Beaner, no. Ortiz. Ortiz. Yeah. What was his first name? Yeah, it was Ortiz. Really good dude. Crazy, though. Like, crazy. And a, and a Victor Ortiz. That was his name. One time he was telling us the story. He's like, man, these Disney kids were fucking with me. <laughs> he's like, the first Disney kid was like, yo. I'm like, dude, back down, Disney kid. <laughs> Dude, Tito or uh, Victor would always go to uh, comedy shows. He loved comedy. Like a lot of crazy dudes, and I mean that with love. 
A lot of crazy dudes love comedy because we're crazy too. You know, it's like um, crazy likes crazy. You know, like a lot of fighters that go watch uh, stand up. You know, I met all those guys. Because they'd be like, because it's the same type of thing. It's like, man, you fucking crazy, man. Sweet. What is this? There's no letter in here. Owen's grandpa's dime. This is all like stitched. I don't know what this means. There's a dime in here. Awesome. It's a mercury dime. Thank you. Whoever sent me that. Super cool. Man, this Disney kid was fucking with me, bro. So I was like, <laughs> I want to just have Mexican. I'm Mexican adjacent. I get the Mexicans, man. I used to love, I would, um, like some of my favorite people in LA were the Mexican line chefs when I worked at a restaurant. They were way funnier than most comedians. They're like, oh, Medicon. Ooh, Medicon's got some new pantalones. Oh, look at Matty going. There's fancy new pantalones. <laughs> They're so good at talking shit. So good at talking shit. Uh, all right, where do we go? Oh, thank you. That's very generous. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, my friend. Oh, is this from Denmark Bear? Yeah. Here's a tip for the piano bear be man. Give one to Cod, that sweet prince. It seems we have the coldest winter in 11 years. I only listen to MSM on the radio when I drive for work. This morning, a so-called climate professor tried to explain the current cooling in the light of global warming. So twisted. It was like hearing someone explain Bitcoin. These people never stop, and we fall for it every time. We don't anymore, Denmark Bear. We're above it. Um, meanwhile, no COVID-related deaths in Delhi, India. Your psycho, Denmark Bear. Thank you, Denmark Bear. I appreciate you, brother. One day we'll get you to the States. You can bring both your gun cabinets, the secret one and the real one. <coughs> yeah, the climate change, because there is climate change right now, but it's, um, I believe, I, the, the thing that is the most coherent to me is the grand solar minimum, where every 400 years, like there's whole graphs around this shit. Like the sun's power goes down a little bit. And it causes uh, climate sh shifts where some areas like Idaho is getting a little warmer, but a lot of parts of America, like it has this, like the, the jet stream has shifted a little bit. And so North Idaho, Washington, Oregon is getting a little more of that, that sweet Pacific vibe. And then it goes up, it gets the Canadian air and bang, brings it right down to Texas. And, um, and so, yeah, I think, uh, I'm starting to think a lot of these people don't, they don't know shit. And I, I'm not, I try not to be arrogant because a lot of times in the past, I've like just thought someone was stupid, but they were really conniving. Um, I don't know. Some of them know stuff. I'm sure some of them know stuff, but I think a lot of these people, they, they have no idea. They have no idea. So they're just like coming up with stuff. And I think they're very low frequency, very pathetic people. Like even just like, like I've interviewed Bill Nye on a podcast, a physics podcast at Caltech. He signed a book for me. I burned it. But at the time I liked him because I, at the time I still thought science did the scientific method. You know, that's what makes me such a threat to a lot of these narratives is I wasn't born into a super right wing family or a super Christian family or like, um, or I was paid to change my mind or anything. It was all so genuine that it's terrifying for liars because I was like, Oh dude, this is great science. I love science. And then over time I'm like, you're not doing science. You're lying. The, the thing that woke me up was transgender children. Like the fact that Bill Nye on Netflix said that, uh, you know, a two year old can choose their gender. I was like, my whole world guys just went, Wah. And uh, Bill Nye made a ton of scientific breakthroughs. That's hilarious, Van Allen Bear. Um, but it's true, though. I'm like, and it, I, I might not have ever woken up from that sleep if it wasn't for that level of evil. They always go too far. They always, <laughs> they always go too far. BB interviewed him on his stream. Ice Age Farmer and Curtis Stone also had a good discussion. Yeah, I think Grand Solar Minimum is what, where it's at. That's why 
And the good news about Grand Solar Minimum is it doesn't make it so your area is like effed. And it, the problem is giant supply chains. You know, if you're dealing with one or two percent margins and like massive farms and stuff like that, um, any change is bad. Every change, any change is bad. Every change is bad. All of it is bad. So, but locally, let's say you get another week of cold or a week of rain or some extra hot days in the summer, some extra cold days in the winter, it doesn't kill your crop. So that's why decentralizing and going more local is the way through it because in grand solar minimums, it's not that like the everyday gardener has a problem. It's the giant supply. It's the empires have a problem. Bill Nye, the PSYOP guy, hilarious. Yeah, he's a creepy little bastard looking back. All right, do you guys want to watch uh, Carl Brown again? Or Actually, I got to open more stuff. What am I doing? All right, here's another box. Trip to Mars can be understood through black Americans. Oh, jeez. See, that's the thing. is like people are acting so crazy that it makes some people afraid. They're like, oh, my God, everyone's so crazy. They're going to come for me. They can't function, guys. A lot of them end up in jail. Guys, crazy is not effective. Like um, Vertech, my buddy, Brandon, who runs Vertech Tactical, legend, lives right down the street, very, very crushing human being. One of the reasons that we came to Sandpoint. And uh, like he'll post videos of like horrible violence happening in America right now. And it's from his hometown. You know, this, there was this one he posted the other day. I don't even like watching this stuff because it, it makes me feel really, Denmark Bear probably loves it. Um, but it's like, you'll just see someone beaten almost to death and then a car run over them. And I'm like, where was this? Like, was this Calcutta? He's like, no, this is my hometown. There's four murders in one night. And, the, but wouldn't the news report it? No, no. It's an intense video. That was his hometown. And then the same guys that had like automatic guns in their, in their car killed like a firefighter and a bunch of other stuff. It's just the wheels are off the wagon guys. Wheels off wagon. And some of these gang members were brought in, I'm guessing, because there's no reason why so many would be here unless they were to do a uh, specific purpose and then they just metastasized. You know, I think a lot of times what happens is uh, thieves and criminals and grabbers, they have no long-term vision. So they're like, oh, we'll bring in a bunch of hitters to do this job. And then like 20 years later, they're still here and they've now have homies and now they hate you. And now they have blackmail on you. You understand? A lot of the wicked, they, they're very short term thinking. They're always like, because they're always trying to put out the fires that are right in front of them. They're like junkies trying, power junkies are worse than heroin addicts. And so living like that. Oh, cool. What's this? Is this duck call? Nice. Thank you. Living like that, oh, another duck call from my buddy, a quackhead. Nice, that's funny. Duck call lanyard. I was wondering where the freaking lanyards were. What is this? Ozark Bottoms Collection, redhead. Waterproof custom cherry and cedar box. Turkey products. Call. I don't know what that is, but it looks great. I'm guessing it's a way to... To get wild, because uh, Gravy Seal Bear is all about hunting now, so he's going to get real into this. Oh, thank you. Gravel for my babble. A letter of appreciation to the Big Bear. A little over a year ago, you would have found the same dude, but he was a hollow shell of what you see now. An empty man who had been beaten down from chasing material in the American dream. Putting children aside and instead putting all his focus and energy on building my bank account and aiming at worldly things I thought would finally make me happy. I spent 37 years of my life aiming at things that hated me. This lifestyle left me with a wife who had given up and lost all respect for me, a failed electrical business that w was two years behind on taxes. You would have found me on the couch after work, mostly depressed and in a cold, frozen state. Sounds like Kyneton Bear every day of the week. All right. Um, it was a life that I needed 100 milligrams of Zoloft, Three fingers of whiskey in my weed pen every evening to numb the whispers 
Just enough to get a little sleep so I could wake up and start the shitty cycle all over again. Sounds familiar, Kyneton Bear? I was being whirled in a vicious uh, revolution. I'll never forget the first time I heard to build a home on an evening stream. My life had become so cold and frozen, the joy and warmth I felt while listening to that song hurt me. Whoa, that's intense. I believe it was the first time in my life I cried at something beautiful. That song placed the first blows on Satan's stronghold he had on me for so long. His pain gave me the motivation to take the first step upward. It stopped the revolution and I had a revelation. Whoa. Last year, among a lot of other things and with God's guidance, I worked myself back to square with all my back taxes, quit watching porn, quit watching television, threw out my weed pen, stopped drinking, quit taking Zoloft all while dealing with a failed marriage, the spell of Corona, losing jo- multiple jobs, and feeling like the only one in town who wouldn't wear a mask. I alone created my own hell, but it was only with God I was able to climb out. So after a year of feeling like God kept throwing me in the fire, pruning all my fruitless branches and burning the dead wood, I am out the other side. Today I find myself, praise be to God, in the calmest state I've been in in over five years. Brother, thank you for being a legend and showing me there's a a better way. Thank you for showing your beautiful family and showing me what real wealth looks like. Thank you for slaughtering all the sacred cows, which ultimately led me back to my reconnection to God. 2020 really was the year of clear vision for me. God kept revealing all my weaknesses, and with every sin he revealed, I would ask him how to stop and turn from it. It was a beautiful letter, dude. With every spiritual battle won, I was blessed with a new piece of armor. That's exactly, exactly it. Today I feel like I am calm because I am wearing the full armor of God, coupled with a renewed mind. Oh, yeah, it's like when you see me first out of Hollywood, that was like I I had... I had left the dragon's wing of protection and I hadn't had gotten the armor yet. And I was just like, dude, a lot of us know that feeling where you almost have a crazy look in your eye. Cause you're like a crab without a shell. And you're just like, I'm not going back in there. <laughs> and over time you get your, you get your, uh, your armor in 2020 God. And I tore down the house and I had built on sand and formed up a new foundation on rock. 2021 is the year I started to build. 2021 is the year I put all my energy and focus on acquiring real wealth. 2021 is the year I focus on doing things that bring joy to me and the people God puts in my life. God is good, brother. This is Bertaria, and I'm grateful to be a small piece in the puzzle. Onward. You talked about showing some interest in bird hunting. And on previous streams, so I've included some duck calls and lanyards for your boys and a turkey call for you. I feel like you should at least call a couple times to the turkeys you put in the pen before hunting them. Ha ha. Love you, brother, and may God keep blessing you and your family. Longbow bear. Wow. Dude, what a wonderful letter, man. What a wonderful letter. And speaking that is is real. It's real. And I there's like, you know, new agey Luciferian bullshit where people talk about manifesting and all that. You know, speak it and it comes true. But there's a good version of that where claim it, name it, speak it. And it really does imagine God being like right there, just waiting for you to ask or waiting for you to claim or state what you want. Asking you shall find, you know, asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find. It's so true. That's why um, just little prayers are so helpful. And the more you're grateful and the more you think of others, the better it will be for your life. All right, Bunny Bear, just a reminder that you've built such a great community around you as well as serving as a great example of an untold amount of people. Thank you forever for my friends and those I've yet to meet. Keep crushing. Thank you, Bunny Bear. I'll play, uh, I should play it to build a home for your longbow bear. It's a great song. <clears throat> Place. 
place where I don't feel alone and I skin I climb to the top I climb the tree to see the world when the gusts came around to blow me down I held on as tightly as you held on me I held as tightly as you held on me and I built a home for you and for me Thanks, Longbow Bear. This song reminds me of everything. Yeah, Goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a great song. I'm sweating from my eyes. Oh, that's hilarious. All right, let's uh, open some more packages, shall we? That's okay with the grabber. Um, good job, baby. Oh, thank you. Got a couple T-shirts here. What is this? What is this? This is my t-shirt. Nice. What is this? Let's see if we got a letter here. Oh, I feel like it could be copper or silver. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, cheated. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that sound. I hear silver. Denmark Bear was silver. My name is Owen. I am the silver man. All right. I am going over the river Styx. One Troy ounce. Isn't it crazy that my, my mother's maiden name is Troy? She's one Troy ounce. Dear Owen, I have never heard of you, and when Gary and Terry announced their sailing excursion, I was apprehensive. But it has been quite enjoyable. I find your so-called gravy like an extra lump of sugar in my morning cup of gray. Enclosed, you will find gifts for Gary and Terry, which I hope you will keep safe for them until their return. I don't know when they're coming back, guys. I heard they got in some serious trouble in Tel Aviv. I chose to make them on the smaller side because I know how Gary and Terry like their tea bags and anuses. They prefer it tight. Oh, Jesus. Also, you will find something for yourself. I find a silver spoon is delightful for stirring my tea. Toodles. Serious part. Okay. For your consideration is a reworked version of a song for our favorite leprechaun, Bob Dylan. In it is his song, All I Really Want to Do, with minor changes to the words. Next page. Thank you for all you do. Keep on crushing. P.S. 
May I please be verified as Bob Dylan Bear? Also, my six-year-old son has named you Grizzly Guy, and I hope he can be verified as Grizzly B. Pronounced Bo. Welcome, Grizzly Bo Bear. Okay, so this goes, I ain't looking to compete with the Jews, beat or cheat or mistreat Jews. Simply Jews, classify Jews, deny, defy, or crucify Jews. All I really want is maybe be friends with Jews. I don't know the Bob Dylan song, but this sounds hysterical. No, no, I ain't looking to fight with Jews. Frighten Jews, tighten Jews. Drag Jews down or drain Jews down. Chain Jews or bean Jews down. All I really want to do is maybe be friends with Jews. That's hilarious. I ain't looking to blind the Jews. Shaga naga lock up the Jews. Analyze Jews or categorize Jews. Finalize Jews, advertise the Jews. All I really want to do is maybe be friends with Jews. All right, that's that's great. I'm not I'm not saying I want to be friends with them. I'm just saying I don't hate them. Hey, Zimmer man, where are you gonna run to? Oh, Zimmer man, where are you gonna run to? Zimmer man, where are you gonna run to? Where are you gonna run to? Oh, lonely day. Well, I ran to the river. It was bleeding air and the sea. It was bleeding air and the sea. It was bleeding all on the knee. So I ran to the rock. Please hide me, I ran to the rock. Please hide me, I ran to the rock. I run to hide you now. I run the day. So the rock cried out. I ain't gonna hide you, the red cried out. I ain't gonna hide you, the red cried I ain't gonna hide you now. I run the day. I said, run. Don't you see I need you to do it right oh, no, 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 no. So I ran to the Lord Please help me Lord Don't you see me down here praying Don't you see me down here praying But the Lord said Go to the devil The Lord said Go to the devil By the way, hey, Denmark Bear, just to let you know, that's twice, twice, while I'm deep in a vibe, I've caught my pen eh, as it fell off my uh, piano. So when you're talking all this shit about tall people not being able to fight, it's, it's no advantage. You do realize my reflexes are insane, right? Granted, I'm not, I'm not real like, I'm not training with Joe Rogan, but like deep in the zone, bang, you just watch me grab a, a pen. It's like, as the pen's flying, I'm like, oh, no way. My wife can do the same thing. It's why people think she's in the CIA. Um, so I just want you to know that, Denmark Bear, that when you're like coming at me like this, you're like, eh, just bam, 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 bam. Grabbing, grabbing like it's the Matrix. There is no boomer. Pop, right in the forehead. Pop, just like that. <laughs> So I ran to the devil, it was bleeding, I ran to the sea. It was bleeding, I ran to the sea. I ain't gonna hide it now, I run the day. So the rock cried out, I'm gonna hide you, the rock cried out. I'm gonna hide you, the rock cried out. I run them day, I run them day. So I ran to the river. It was bleeding, I ran to the sea. It was bleeding, I ran to the sea. I'm gonna run your own. I'll run them day. Oh, Cinnamon, where you gonna run to? Cinnamon, where you gonna run to? Where you gonna run to? Dude, I'm a better Bob Dylan than Bob Dylan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this whole song right now. How's it go, it goes. But the rock cried out, 
I can't hide you the rock cried out. I can't hide you the rock cried out. I ain't gonna hide you, guy. All on that day, I said, Rock, what's the matter with you, Rock? Don't you see I need you, Rock? All oh, on, all on that day. So I ran to the river. It was bleeding, I ran to the sea. It was bleeding, I ran to the sea. It was bleeding all on that day. So I run to the river. It was boiling, I run to the sea. It was boiling, I run to the sea. <clears throat> all on that day. So I ran to the Lord. Please help me, Lord. Don't you see me praying? Don't you see me down here praying all on that day? But the Lord said, Go to the devil, the Lord said, Go to the devil. <coughs> he said, Go to the devil all on that day. So I ran to the devil. He was waiting, I ran to the devil. He was waiting, I ran to the devil. He was waiting. All on that day, I cried, Power! Power, Lord! It gets so intense. Cinnamon, you ought to be praying. Cinnamon, you ought to be praying. Cinnamon, you ought to be praying. All on that day, I cried, Power! Power to the Lord! Power to I said power all on that day So I ran to the devil yeah. He was waiting I ran to the devil He was waiting I ran to the devil I cried out money Many, 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 many In my sweaty beak Oh my money sweaty my hands are sweaty Cause the river was boiling The river was boiling Cause I went down in the river It was boiling <clears throat> he, No, he tried to hide behind the rock In the Quran, by the way, a lot more people used to know the Quran You know that um, it was the number one selling book in the 18th century in, uh, in, uh, among, Amongst Protestant Anglos to this day, Thomas Jefferson has a Quran in his temple room. True story. I don't know how dare you, Fox News. Okay, anyway, a very interesting part, and one of the reasons it's so it's so uh, demonized is because uh, in, in their end-time report, they get very specific about a very specific group of people and what happens to them. And I'm not making any claims. I'm just letting you know what's in a book. Um. A certain tribe attempts to hide behind rocks. I said, Rack, please hide me, Rack. And the rock says, I ain't going to hide you, guy. In the Quran's end times, the rock, literal rocks that the grabbers are hiding behind, uh, say they, they tell the grabbers that I ain't going to hide you. Isn't that fascinating? Jefferson had to fight the Barbary pirates. He had to know what they were about. No, he, he based the Declaration of Independence partially on Sharia law. Oh, how fucking dare you? I know. It's going to make baby boomers' heads explode. <clears throat> I, I get it. I get it. 20 years in the fighting in the desert makes you incapable of understanding certain things. No, he wasn't. He didn't have the Quran, the Bible, and the Bhagavad Gita in his uh, temple room because he was trying to fight pirates. That's literally retarded. Sharia law is very close to the Declaration of Independence, like how they were trying to structure the American government. Oh, my God, I'm going to kill myself. I'm a baby boomer. I get it. I get it. Dude, guys, I get it. It's all good. All right. Uh, Mohammed was the first religious leader to ever start a successful state in Medina. At, and I, I get it. People are, people are fucking triggered. They're triggered, triggered, triggered. Well, you have to understand how much of a legend that dude was. Oh, how dare you? He killed grandboys and he fucking wasn't a demon. I don't, I don't care. I'm telling you right now.
Jefferson also said that Christianity was the greatest moral order if you remove that uh, supernatural story. Yeah, Jefferson rewrote the Bible to not have any miracles because he didn't want to confuse the secular. Um, anyway, and he didn't believe in the Trinity, obviously, and all that stuff. Uh, that All the forefathers were like that. They were... Um, I don't, I don't agree with them on that. I think Jesus absolutely performed miracles. <clears throat> um, Jefferson was a bit of a graveler. He was graveler adjacent. They all were. They all were. But it's, they, they did set up an awesome government. But um, what was I just talking about? This is just history. It's just history, guys. And if you want to pretend that the Koran didn't influence the founding fathers, you're lying to yourself. It was one of the number one selling books of that era amongst Protestant Anglos <clears throat> because they wanted to know how to structure a government. Like, because Muhammad was the first religious leader to ever set up uh, a successful government. I mean, it is what it is. And so they wanted to figure out how to do that. And, you know, a lot of quote unquote Christians have no problem flicking their bean to 50 shades of gray, but as soon as you say, well, you should read the, I haven't read the Quran. I've read about 10 pages of it, but as soon as you say, well, why don't you know what's in the Quran?" They go, oh, how dare you demons, demons. And then they go back to scratching the record to some fucking billionaire S and M Dom. It's insane. John Adams was based though. Oh yeah. The Adams brothers had an interesting, I don't know. Were they brothers, John and Samuel? They were on there. Dude, there was a lot of like hilarious, uh, I don't know if they were psyops or if it was legit. Where when you had the Boston Massacre, you had one Adams brother on one side and the other Adams brother on the other side fueling tension with media. Very interesting. Churchians have no problem spiraling about Quran, but silent on the town. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about just like Harry Potter. You know, it's like you have no problem with your kids reading science books. Science is the whispers of Satan at this point. Not the scientific method. We're observed reality, hypothesis, um, you know, form a experiment, theory, test theory, law. Like, that's great. But this whole, like, I have a theory that gravity is bending space-time. Well, what's your experiment? We don't have one. How dare you? It's like, okay. I was, hope I was opening a lesbian coffee shop called Flick Your Bean, then I realized it. Oh, how dare you? Are any uh, scientism is bad? Yeah, which is what it is now. It's the same with Jews. It's why I don't condemn science or condemn Jews. Because just because 99% of the mainstream has corrupted a word, you can't sell porn and be a Jew, guys. That's crazy. Read the Torah. Yeah, you're allowed to do trickery of the non-Jewish population and stuff, but you're not allowed to do that shit. You're not allowed to engage in these behaviors. You're not, you, you spill your seed. You get, like, your fucking stone thrown at your forehead. You're not like a professional masturbator, guys. This is nonsense. And so uh, it's the same with science. It's like I'm not going to say science is bad uh, because 99% of the mainstream is, is, uh, is not science. All right. Owen's look of disgust has me howling. Yeah, Most don't believe in God these days, but these Masons will accept a Muslim before them. Right, exactly. It's an Abrahamic religion. Islam is closer to Christianity infinitely than science. It's the same prophets. And I'm not trying to pitch you Islam, guys, <clears throat> at all. Uh, like, people are so scared. They're so, they are Islamophobic. It's true. Because they're scared. They're scared of how close it is. They're scared of it. Because they're scared that, that maybe a group of people are going to tell you to stop living the way you're living and then you can't jerk off to porn and your Schofield Bible says it's okay. That's what they're scared of because it's not rational because global migratory patterns have to do with debt. The Mexicans coming in from the South, those are Christians. Oh, how dare you? Catholics aren't great, whatever. So imagine saying we had a Christian invasion from the South. Retarded, right? Okay, it's the same with saying it's a Muslim invasion. No, it's foreigners doing your manual labor because of debt. That's the reality of it. My boomer dad was pretty concerned when I said I'm Muslim adjacent. Well, yeah, because they won't face reality. They won't face that, like, imagine if people said that the Mexicans coming in from the South, build the wall, build the wall, that's a Christian invasion. Those Mexicans are higher percentage Christians than, American, than, than the American posterity population is currently. 
The current population of America is less Christian than the Mexicans and Guatemalans invading from the South economically. Okay, is that causing cognitive dissonance yet? It should. <laughs> it's like, imagine if, if people are like, build the wall, there's a Christian invasion from the South. Do I, am I endorsing the mass migration of Mexicans? No. I think we should do our own, um, mow our own grass and raise our own children. Pick our own cotton. The whole thing is economic. So when I say Islam isn't migration, people go, oh, how dare you? That's crazy. I'm like, the people coming into your country are not practicing Islam. Like, if you're in Europe right now and there's, like, rape gangs and people throwing hand grenades and shit, those are, like, desperate economic migrants coming because of debt and globalism. And so calling them Muslim means nothing. It's like nonsense talk. And you could either admit it and see it or not, because I am not wrong what I'm saying. And the Mexican example of Christianity should really open your eyes to it. Because if there's no demand, if there was no demand for the Schofield Bible to shirk their uh, responsibilities, no one would, they, the grabber wouldn't have sold any. If there's no demand for someone else to raise your kids, there'd be no Mexican maids. If there's no demand for another man to manicure your lawn and, and clean your pool, there's no, then they're not here. Because they'd come here, they go, oh, anybody want me to do any work? And we go, no, we're good. And they go back to Mexico because they'd rather be in Mexico because it's their country. They don't like it here. It's too cold. They think gringos are pussies. Dude, they don't like it here. They don't want to be away from their family. They just come here. They make a bunch of money. They send it home. And then they head back. If there wasn't a demand, they wouldn't be here. It's the same in Europe. And so if you want to be... All right, here we go. We got some more, um, some more of this. On vacation to L.A., I went to the comedy store for the first time as a fan of stand-up. I met Joe Rogan and thought your voice was high, and his set, or I thought his voice was high, and his set was not funny. I shook his hand, and looking back, I feel disgusted. And he was shorter than my wife. Argus Hamilton crushed. Yeah, yeah, Argus is really funny. Thanks for the streams, Bay Ocean Bear. Argus has a great jo- joke about Bill Clinton about how he was constantly. Just trying to keep people from chasing him. Like, Bill Clinton is the song Sinner Man. Friend of a bear. Tip for the piano man. Great comedy. Thought-provoking gravy. And for the buckets. Thank you. Scouse bear. Thanks, Owen and Cod. Anytime. Levy South Idaho bear. Tip for the piano. Tip for BB and dirt buckets. Owen, can you play any Oogie Boogie rock and roll piano riffs? Uh, no, I'm not black. But all I can do like this, like... <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, but should any demand be indulged... Well, it's about the morality of the local population. If it was a minority of people that wanted foreigners to do their work, uh, it wouldn't work. You could shame them. If, if there really truly was a moral majority, which there used to be, you, you could sh- just like mask wearing, you could shame them into oblivion. You know, you could be like, why is a foreigner raising your children? The reason that it's all working is because it's, mo- it's socially accepted by the majority. And unless you face reality, you can't fix it. Unless you face reality, you can't fix it. And so I'm here to fix it. Uh, yes, yes, it is. Not tribe, no shame. Right, right. That's, that's why they want to break um, a Danish in-group preference or, you know, make white self-hatred and all that. It's just like what I talked about earlier. It's not because they like these other people. A big spell breaker that I've had for people is I say, do you think George Soros would spend millions of dollars to get justice for a uh, George Floyd. George Soros is an international banker in his like, 80s, like a real lizard-looking guy. Do you think that he cares about George Floyd? And people have to really think, I'm like, the entire financial infrastructure for justice for George comes from Soros. Do you think he actually cares? No, of course not. So then what is the purpose? It's to break a population from their wealth and get them to accept the lives of these other people. Urban black people in America live in a way that they want white people to live. They live in little uh, ghettos and pods and they're dependent on the system and easy to control. That's what they want. That's why they glorify them. That's why they glorify trans and gay and all this stuff because it's easy to control them. It has nothing to do with social justice. Why do they keep giving all these people 
uh, like, oh, this black guy got into college before me and I have a 800 points higher on the SATs. They want him in debt. They want cheaper slaves, guys. These are not moral people. And George Soros is a puppet for the people that gave him the billions when he crashed the, uh, the British economy. Do you think George Soros cares? Why does he do this? Why is no amount of money enough for these people? It's because they're puppets. And it's okay. Don't stop. You don't need to stop them. Let them do their thing. While that's all happening, Mojo. Oh, Ursa Major, morning Mojo Bar Soap. Why, thank you. That's great. While they're doing their thing, you do your thing. And your thing is local, productive, grateful, God-fearing, loving, family building. Be fruitful, multiply, don't be fruity and boil, guys. Somebody just made me this. Let me read this. You don't have to beat them to win. You don't have to beat them to win, guys. <clears throat> they beat themselves. You don't have to. It's like this, this binary, this 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 0 1 1. It's like this binary way of looking at the world. You think, like, we have to beat Soros to win, to, to keep our sovereignty. No, no, no. If you don't engage with them, they don't exist. <clears throat> we have, there's so, there's like, an, for all intents and purposes, there's an infinite amount of space and resources in the world. So carve out your area and really build it, community, family, self, family, community, nation, all under God. It's like this beautiful umbrella. You don't have to win. Just let them lose. Exactly. Beat Soros and 10 more Soros pop up like Wagamon. Exactly. Exactly. Engaging with them. It's like, strike me down, young Skywalker. Right? He loves it. Like, hit me. Hit me. If, fear me. Anger is uh, from fear. That was my, uh, it is one of my uh, things I deal with is wrath. And so, and because I don't allow myself to feel fear, doesn't mean it's not there. It just becomes anger. And so that's why, um, like one time, um, I really yelled at, at Walter like intensely because he was teasing his brother. Charlie started crying and he couldn't catch his breath from crying. And, um, and he started turning a little blue. It was really, it was terrifying. You know, Charlie was crying, and then he couldn't catch his breath. And that's a thing, you know, kids do that. <clears throat> they get so worked up that they, they can, like, not breathe. And I was like, I just yelled at Walter, Walter! You know? And it's because I was scared. It wasn't because I was that mad at Walter, and then we had a good family talk, and everything's great. But I don't, I don't feel fear. It doesn't mean it's not there. It just can, and that's why the less fear I have, the less angry I get. Because um, anger came from fear. And so, um, you know, that's why fear God only is so important. Because fear is easy to manipulate. Fear and uh, anger is very... Because anger is no... It's the same exact thing as fear. It's fear. It's, uh, it's fear that's been... Uh, that's had been gated. You know, it's like uh, an electric circuit. All right, the angriest I ever saw my dad was when I was missing for a couple hours. Yeah, because he was afraid. And so then he got really mad at you. How dare you make me that afraid? And uh, that's, that's one reason why a lot of parents don't let themselves get close to their children, especially atheists, because they think that that's an, like if something happened to their kid, it's an unimaginable um, pain. And so if they don't love them, they'll never feel that pain. Um, I know I've said it before, but angry is a secondary emotion. The fear causes the anger. Yeah, yeah, totally. <clears throat> uh, fear can be a helpful reset button. A barking collar helped to rehab a very broken dog and would escalate to really destructive behavior. I don't know what that means. It's not, it's not a reset, but I don't know what that means. Before I forget, oh yeah, God already said that. I actually turn fear God only into revere God. Revere is love. Yeah, 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 totally. But no, but fear God only means your your destiny and your future is in one hand, and that's God's. When you understand that, fear God only doesn't mean like you're just always jumpy and all that. It means like whatever you're afraid of is allowed by God. 
So if you extrapolate and go back to the source of your fear, it, it says like, oh, so only the source. And so how do I, what causes God to get angry at me? And so then you live a more righteous life. You live a better life, a more balanced life, a more honest life. And the more you do that, the less you have to be afraid. You understand? It like actually like has this beautiful, uh, timeless thing about it. When you vibrate higher, you're at peace, calm, cool. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's not the blood you spill that gets you what you want. It's the blood you share. Yeah, totally, right? Does righteous anger exist? Yes. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about wrath. I'm not talking about passion. <clears throat> like righteous anger, I don't know. It's, see, a lot of this has to do with uh, translations and vocabulary. Like, you know, like there's a difference between being frozen and still. When people talk about righteous anger, it's not wrath. It's not the same thing. And I, I'll have to think more about the, the vocabulary, the synonyms, all that stuff. Wrath is not the same as righteous anger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anger is a broad word, yeah. Yeah, righteous, that's a good way to put it, Warlock Bear. Righteous anger is a choice and not a stumble. Wrath and anger uh, isn't a choice, it's a reaction. Uh, so, yeah, righteous indignation. A choice is different than a reaction. Yeah, more authori authoritative indignation. Anger is like, Anger pretty much is a reaction. You can when you, when someone is in anger, in wrath, they they seem very like childlike almost. Where it's like they're in an emotional state that wasn't their choice. All right, I'm I'm rambling. I'm gonna read more. Big Bear, I've been a follower of yours for a few years now, and let and the thoughts you had about making our own communities while providing real work very seriously. So while you were building a home. Uh, stead, I was working on expanding my knowledge as well and sold off the Bitcoin I had to train myself on different machines. We now have our own shop for part making, prototyping, and custom machine building. Uh, if only of the bears, if any of the bears need any services or have skills that they believe they can contribute, I would love to speak with them. Hope all is well. And as always, be fruitful, multiply, don't be fruiting boy guy, Rob. So this is his uh, place. It's called um, NorCal Machine Works. You can reach them at, let's see a website. Contact us, Rob LeBlanc at nine. Uh, you can just email him at rob at norcalmachine.com. That's out of Rockland, California. Norcalmachine.com. Sweet. What is this? My sister was missing for 15 minutes in a mall and we were freaked out. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's also crazy how much, like me and my kid, like when me and my brother were little, we were gone all the time. No one really looked for us. And my mom's very caring. So it's like, I always, I always wondered how that, how that works. You know, I think uh, being at peace is is good because we, we used to be able to, we had a lot of our own freedom. What is this? Oh, this is a nice little bit of silver. Nice. Nice. Sweet. Thank you. Very cool. Put that in my pocket. The queen's super grabbled money, basically worthless. <laughs> Look at that old bitch. A pound. I bet that's what she wants, too. Dirty, dirty grabber. Currency explained. Russian doll style. Eggs are good. Money is debt. And family is fortune. Exactly. The tale of Paul Bunyan. Time travel again? Could this be Big Bear and Dandy? I love reading this to my son. We have his grandpa's original. If you ever need a new alias, perhaps Paul Bunyan Bear. That's awesome. All right, let's see the note here. Greetings from the rancid swamp, which is fitting for someone of mosquito height. After two, uh, after two back surgeries, I'm down to 22.58 Rogans. Strong as ever, so I can pull my own weight. That of my family and many other bears in need. As I have to write in all caps to be 
legible, you may assume that I am deaf and blind, but I actually have all my senses. I am blessed to have an amazing wife that turned me on to you a couple years ago. We have two young boys and another child on the way. We'll be happy with three or twelve. It's out of our hands. We are looking for land as we currently live in a fairly rancid area, in our minds anyway. We love the Bertari Times app and look forward to a swamp meetup soon. Perhaps dirt buckets will be around. Oh yeah, he's in Florida. Yeah. As soon as you say filthy swamp, you, you know it's Florida. I too am wary of the bike thief. When I was 13, I mowed numerous lawns to be able to purchase the most spectacular GT Performance BMX bike. I had it for two weeks and then made the mistake of parking it at a friend's house. Much too close to MLK Junior Boulevard. It's true. Onward. Lincoln's voice. For, uh, I'm just going to do it all in the same voice. I, I'm enjoying my voice. Five score and, you know, when you stop wanking, it's out of your hands. Good one, Denmark Bear. Five score and seven years ago, our four skinless fathers really grabbled up and destroyed our monetary system. And now the Fed is testing what will happen with a 55% drop in the market, which means it will most likely happen. Farms do not drop in value onward. Redditor. Anyone have any stock tips? Big Bear. Yeah, stocks up on chickens. Good one. I like that. Yeah, I think the market's going to tank pretty soon. It, it just feels like it. But then again, I don't, I'm not always good at understanding the market because it's all based on lies, but there is patterns to it. Can you imagine how expensive bike insurance would be on MLKF? They don't even do it. They just, it's just the price of the bike is the bike insurance. And their time. So it's like, let's say you have a $300 bike. If you insure it, it would be $400. Because it's $300 for the bike and then $100 for their time. Because the odds it gets stolen is 100%. A poem. Your bell Latin has really improved my rhyming and poetry skills. All are grabblers, really, of the tribe of Juu. All are bike thieves, black oo. But aren't all rollerbladers gay oo? And aren't all politicians retard oo? Do all QAnoners watch porno? And aren't all boomers trapped in propaganda? No need to fret, bears. Just build and crush you. Excellent poem. Right, let me read this super chat and I'll finish this one. Thank you for showing the way, BB. Anytime, leash, leash. I'm a believer, and since time is not linear, I believe that when we die, we are instantly with all our family, past and future generations. All lineage on earth until Jesus comes back. You could be next to your great, great and 12 grandson the moment you pass. All in front of Jesus. With this thought, anyone in your family that has passed is already with you and all your future generations. Whoa, whoa, totally. That just hit really, really close to home. There shouldn't be so much sadness for those that pass. They're with us. We are the ones that have to wait to see them again. That, that rang very close to home. All right. One day I will have enough debt to purchase, in, in quotes, money, <coughs> to purchase an ambiguous vehicle, our low-flying jet plane. I will travel 24,901 miles at the equator, due west. When I don't end at the same spot I began, I will call out all the boomers and more. It's not a globe. That's all for today. May I please be verified as rancid swamp bear. Welcome. P.S. You're doing great. Things for humanity. God bless you and your family. Awesome letter. Should we do one more? Should we do one more, everybody? I think we should do one more. And then, I got stuff to do, yo. I got to do my goat still. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm squirting. This is awesome. What is this? this? Is a hat? Oh my God, that feels amazing. I was born to wear this. This is like this feels like home. This is unbelievable. I can't hear anything now. I feel like Lady QAnon Bear's husband. This may be the greatest thing I've ever put on my head, guys. This is this feels so good. And this is good. This is real, too. This isn't the bullshit. This isn't what Kyneton's mom wears when she goes out on the town.
Greetings, Big Bear. <laughs> Oasis Bear here. What a time to be alive. I, too, see the future is bright. Hang on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up the flaps. Oasis Bay here, what a time to be on. I too see the future is bright with opportunities abound. Not to say it will be full of lollipops and fancy pants. Sorry, Mrs. Cotton, I was joking around. I, I don't think that you actually wear this hat. All right. <clears throat> but as my wife says, all we need is a cardboard box with a styrofoam roof. That's a good, that's a good wife. She's obviously a crusher. We had our third child at home this past summer, and she homeschools our children. My children are fourth generation in our old farmhouse, but not to despair. I've been working on our new log cabin. Are you kidding me? That's how you got should live. I'm going to... That's all right. We are going to build something, though, because I want my mom to live with us. So I think we're going to look to build a house. Because I, my mom's down to live in Idaho now. The people in Oswego have gone that insane, where she's finally ready. Hang on a second. So we're gonna build her a wing. One second. That's a guy ready to crash. Look at that. Um, the tent, Paul, you provide to this community is legendary. I thank you, sir, for all the spell breaking. How dare you? Tea times, garbage trucks, red pill roosters, and Rogans, to name a few. You get it. We have been having meetups from the amazing Bertaria Times app, and the people are top-notch, from pilots to doctors, farmers to blacksmiths. The local community building has been inspirational. When the grand solar minimum is upon us, I bestow the warmest thing I could make, this fur trapper's cap. This beaver pelt was chosen for its perfection out of the hundreds I trapped from northern Minnesota during the coldest part of the winter to ensure the best fur. Oh, my God, it's amazing. I hope this letter finds you and your family well and that I made the hat the proper size. It's never fit. Nothing's ever fit me better. Ever. As I'm extremely busy, if you do not read this letter, can someone please let me know on the Bertaria Times app? Sincerely, Oasis Bear. Yeah. Can someone let Oasis Bear know I read the letter? Thank you. George, you see a grandma out there. P.S. God bless you and your family and all the bears. Oh, my God. I love it. All right, it's been two hours. I got to go. I, I'm no longer going to do like, I'm not just going to keep going just because I feel like it. I got to be, uh, I got to be professional about this whole situation. All right, unauthorized.tv, where all these videos will always live, uh, uh, theoretically. Unbearablesmedia.com, where the Great Mountain Bears sketch is exclusively right now. Uh, Carl Brown. BertariaTimes.com, there's new articles all the time. Uh, Bertaria Times app, anywhere you get the app. You, you see a grabber out there, boy. And if you'd like some grabble to tip the piano man, P.O. Box 490 Sandpoint, Idaho 83864, or entropystream.live slash app slash Owen Benjamin Comedy. You can follow me on Instagram at Owen Comedy. I don't, I no longer give out my super secret sneaky one that I do. Um, and this has been Tea Time with Gary and Terry. Gary and Terry have been uh, sampling tea bags around the realm for the last uh, week or two. Uh, they don't know when they'll be home. They may be dead. They may be dead already. I haven't heard from them in two days. And I, I can't say I don't, I, don't miss, uh, I don't miss Terry's screech at all. Gary, good guy. Terry, he's always in the background like, tell him, tell him. Oh, it's, all right, I got to go. There might be grabbers at the door. All right, have a wonderful day. Be fruitful and multiply. Don't be fruity and boil, guy. And thank you all so much for the wonderful gifts. It warms my giant heart. Oh, and final thing. Uh, somebody uh, commented this, and this is a good thing to understand. So on the engineering topic, my electrician husband got major props today and a guaranteed project for 18 months in COVID Canada because he managed to turn retard-level engineering plans into a workable system in reality, using logos and grit. It's been a great day in the preserves and baking bear house, making the man a cheesecake tomorrow. Dude, electricians make the world go round. No, not the world. That's a weird thing to say. Electricians, plumbers, construction. Guys, the engineers, they're all being taught that we landed on the moon and building seven killed itself. 
They're, they're like retards now. So grassroots, ground level, learn elect- how to be an electrician or a plumber, and you're going to be the guys that they need. Because the, the engineering plans at this point are ridiculous. It's like, well, I mean, given the fact that the Van Allen belt, you can just drive right. Dude, it's, they're, they're gone mentally. My wife, I talk, I, I'm, gonna, I'm starting to sound like Ben Shapiro with my wife as a doctor. My wife is not an engineer. She's a mother and a stay-at-home wife. I know I keep referencing this, but she literally has her master's in structural engineering, and they taught her that jet fuel melts steel beams. It doesn't. So you have to understand engineers are getting like the more lies they're building on lies, the more retarded they're getting. So engineers and plumbers and people on the ground are the reason these buildings won't fall down. And the ones that uh, just follow orders and just do the retarded shit, the buildings will fall down. All right, guys. I'll see you guys soon.